Hello aspirants, I welcome you all to daily newspaper analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 2nd of September 2024. Now before getting into the news article analysis, I have an important announcement for you. See year on year preliminary examination is getting tougher. So to check your preparedness and be prepared for the prelims 2025, we are launching pre stroming test series. It will be starting on 6th September 2024. It will be covering 48 tests and we have given the registration link in the description. You can click the link in the description and register for the test series. Along with that, we have All India UPSC Mains Open Mock Test 2024. So who are all going to appear for 2024 Mains Examination? You can click the link in the description and register for the test and give your test to check your preparedness for Mains 2024. So along with this announcement, let me display you the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. Now these three articles are the preliminary based articles that we are going to discuss in this particular video. So just stick to us until the end. Now look at this article about Japan. It has developed a heat resistant rice variety. This is done by Japan because for the past 25 years, the rice yield has reduced significantly due to climate change. So this is what the article is talking about. So in this news article discussion, let us revise about climate resilient agriculture that is practiced in India from the prelims perspective. So what is this climate resilient agriculture? See, we have 15 agroclimatic zone in India. So different agroclimatic zone require different strategies and technologies so identifying that and implementing them in the right time is called the climate resilient agriculture now the practices that we are going to implement in these zones they should withstand climate variability and extreme weather events so all these combined is known as the CRA or the climate resilient agriculture so now let us see some of the strategies and technologies that has been taken so far to implement this CRA see the first important thing is develop resilient or the resistant varieties we have developed shabahi dan then drr dan 42 they are climate resilient crops then we have pusha 1501 and pusha 44 these are wheat varieties that has been developed by our icar so the first important thing that has been implemented is drought and heat resistant crop varieties now secondly is water management we have introduced micro irrigation to be specific we have introduced drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation when we talk about drip irrigation we will apply the necessary water required for the plant directly at the roots and the sprinkler irrigation the water will be applied in the canopy of the trees so this is what the difference between the drip and the sprinkler irrigation then we have insisted for the rainwater harvesting system even for the farmers and finally we have implemented watershed management here watershed management includes soil erosion control and putting a check on water extraction as well so these steps has been taken from the water management Side. Now, thirdly, agroforestry and climate diversification. See, in the agri field itself, we have integrated trees into farming system. So, this act as a wind shield and also help in reducing soil erosion and improving the fertility of the region. Apart from this, we have climate smart agriculture practices. For example, we have promoted conservation agriculture like minimum tillage, crop rotation, and cover cropping. And we have integrated pest management or the IPM. So, all these are some of the strategies and technologies that have been implemented. Now, let us see some of the significance of these technology. See, the first important thing is food security. We can ensure food security for the larger population and we can maintain stable food production even though there is climate threat. So, this is the first important significant step. Now, secondly, economic stability. So, even if the crop fails for the particular season, we can mitigate it through the stocks that we have in the backup. So, that, so this helps in economic economic stability and contribute to India's GDP and employment and it reduces the disguised unemployment in the agricultural sector. Now thirdly it leads to sustainability because we are preserving the soil health, we are saving the water resources and we are managing the biodiversity as a whole. So this will promote sustainable use of natural resources as well. So what is mean by sustainability? It is. It means we have to 
use it for hours that is the present time and we have to save for the future as well so the cra it actually leads to sustainability practices as well however there are certain challenges that are associated with the implementation of cra let us see them one by one see the first thing is india has 85 percentage of small and marginal farmers they lack resources and technology access to implement cra to its fullest effect secondly there are infrastructural and market access issues for example there are inadequate irrigation facilities and storage issues and there are lack and there is a lack of connectivity to access the market in the first place then there are issues like lack of awareness and education because there is a limited understanding among the farmers who are mainly small and marginal farmers in the agri sector and finally even though we introduce the climate resilient crops we cannot predict the weather patterns that are changing very frequently in the recent times so these are all certain challenges in implementing cra now here i have displayed certain government schemes you can just go through it here the national action plan on climate change napcc it is very important except that you can see that in the image given here you can see all these schemes when we talk about napcc it is overseen by ministry of environment forest and climate change however it has eight missions which are managed by different ministries for example the national mission for sustainable agriculture nmsa it is implemented by ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare likewise the different missions are managed by different ministries now let us see some of support technologies under ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare see the first important thing is kisan call center kcc it provides agricultural advice and support it is like a state specific call center for farmers secondly we have m kisan it provides weather forecast advice and market information then we have enam enam is a trading platform where the farmers can directly meet the buyers it is fully digitalized then we have kisan subida it provides weather forecast and market prices and farming tips it is a mobile application then we have the drip irrigation system it is promoted under per drop more crop scheme and finally we have nicra which is national innovation in climate resilient agriculture here the emphasis is given to develop and promote climate resilient practices so these are all very important technologies that you have to remember now we have a prelims practice question from our previous year here the question is regarding permaculture farming so here the correct answer for this particular question is option d 1214 so with these information now let us move on to the next news article now look at this article it talks about urbanization now suddenly it is in news because of a study conducted by nature cities the result of the study is that in asia the cities are growing only upwards and not outwards what does this mean the buildings are growing only taller with number of stories but it is not growing outwards so this is what the article is talking about so in this news article discussion we shall revise about the urbanization trend in india from the prelims perspective so let's start with what is the definition of urbanization in india see according to census of india we have two definition the standard definition is that the places which includes municipality corporation cantonment board and etc they are urban areas apart from that when a area has minimum population of 5000 nearly 75 percentage of male engaging in non agricultural employment and a population density of 400 per square kilometers when all these minimum standards are met then that area is termed as urban area as per the census of india so this is what the definition of urban area but what does the term urbanization mean see it means the transition or the shift or the shift of a rural area to urban area in terms of population due to migration or due to the shift in economic activity like focusing on primary to secondary sector so when this transition happen when the rural area gets transformed into an urban area we call it as urbanization okay now we shall see the trend in urbanization it is projected that over 50 percentage of india's population is expected to live in cities by 2050 okay this is a population projection now let us see the urban population statistics as per 2011 so we have total urban population of 377.1 million it is approximately 31.6 percentage so nearly 31.6 percentage of population is urbanized population in india as per 2011 census and when we compare it with 2001 census 2011 census has 3.35 percentage points higher than the previous one 
Okay. Now let us see most urbanized area as per 2011 census. See, when we talk about the union territories, the Delhi has the highest urbanized population of 97.5 percentage. Then we have Chandigarh with 97.3 percentage. When it comes to states, Goa has 92.2 percentage as the highest, and Mizoram has 51.5 percentage as highest. When we talk about the least, we have Bihar with only 11.3 percentage, followed by Himachal Pradesh with only 10 percentage. So, this means that these states have only rural population and they are in the transition to the urbanized population. Okay. Now, let us see some of the government initiatives specifically for urbanization that is happening in India. So, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, they only take care of promoting urban growth and sustainability. When it comes to urbanization, planning is very, very important. We have to take care of slum development. We should ensure that there is no slum development itself which means we have to provide accommodation for the migrated population from the rural area. Apart from this we have to check for green space, we have to check for sanitation, we have to check for proper sewage disposal, we have to check for proper transportation and a lot like that. We have to see about education, medical care, everything. So, all these includes urban planning. So, in that line we have Atal Mission for Rejuvenation and Urban Transmission. So, in that line we have Atal Mission for Rejuvenation and Urban Transformation in short called as Amrut. This develops basic infrastructure like water, sewage, green space and etc. Currently, we have Amrut 2.0. It aims for universal water supply and sewage management. Secondly, we have Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban. This focuses on providing Pukka houses with central assistance to all the EWS category people and, swim and slum dwellers. Currently, we are in PM Awas Yojana Urban 2.0. The target of the scheme is to provide 1 crore urban poor and middle class families housing assistance. So, this is about PM Awas Yojana Urban. Thirdly, we have small Smart Cities Mission. See, it focuses on sustainable and inclusive development. How it provides core infrastructure, it provides for clean and sustainable environment and thereby it helps to attain a proper quality of life. So, this is about the Smart Cities Mission. Apart from that, we have PM Swanidhi Scheme. See, this was promoted during COVID-19. It is a micro credit facility for street vendors and it provides access to loans to any restart businesses. So, these are all certain schemes that are being promoted specifically for urban development in India. Now, we shall see a prelims practice question regarding this topic. Here you have to identify which of the statements here describes the concept of urbanization and related schemes in India correctly. The correct answer for this particular question is option B213 only. So, with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article. Look at this article. It talks about the statistics of rice and wheat cultivation. If you see in this graph, in the recent years, the wheat cultivation has declined and the rice cultivation has been increased. So, this is the reason why why this article has been written. So, in this news article discussion, let us revise about the conception and production pattern of rice and wheat from the prelims perspective. Now, let us start with the wheat production challenges. See, the main important challenge that has been faced by wheat production is the climate change. We have shorter winters, which means that we have warmer condition prevailing. So, this is affecting the cultivation of wheat itself. And again, we have higher demand for wheat, but the government goodons also lack proper wheat stocks to supply the demand. So, this is the major problem faced by wheat production. However, we have surplus when it comes to rice. This is because we have multiple seasons. It can be grown in different seasons and it is climate resilient, meaning it cannot be affected meaning rice is less affected by climate change and it is oversupply due to abundance of production. The government goodons have a lot of stocks of rice and many farmers has diverted their land for rice cultivation because the wheat is getting affected by the climate change and giving a reduced yield. So, this is what the template is actually trying to convey. Now, let us see what are all the conception pattern for rice and wheat. So far, we saw about the production pattern. So, when we talk about the conception pattern, actually, 
the wheat consumption pattern has been increased due to many processed food like pasta, bread and etc. We all know wheat has higher gluten content. This raises the batter and gives proper baked structure. So, so wheat is highly used in processed food and currently the consumption pattern has been increased and the demand has been increased but the production is declined due to the climate change and other factors. When we talk about rice, its production and consumption has been remained stable because it is actually a staple food in India. When we talk about the top producers of wheat, we have Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab and Haryana. On the other hand, the top producers in rice includes West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh and Punjab. Now let us quickly go through what are all the problems that are faced by wheat production and consumption. See the first important issue is heat waves. In the recent summer, heat waves are enormous and it led to high heat stress. So this has actually declined the wheat yield because wheat is actually a temperature sensitive crop. So this is the first reason. Now the second reason is reduced water or the water scarcity. See many states like Punjab and Haryana has already depleted groundwater. This has led to water stress and water scarcity. So the government is trying to reduce the groundwater through Jal Shakti initiatives like Atal Bujal Yojana. Hope this measure will increase the groundwater that required for cultivation of this particular crop. Now the third issue is with respect to changing monsoon pattern. See as you all know when the southwest monsoon it hits western guards and provide enormous rain to this particular region which is the windward side of western guards and when the monsoon winds moves interior the rainfall actually declines. This means that there is regional variability in the rainfall pattern with respect to monsoon itself and now the monsoon itself is being distorted with different rainfall patterns. Now this is actually impacting the cultivation of wheat crops. Now fourth and most important thing is soil degradation. The fertility of soil is being declined due to the increased salinity due to high temperature. Obviously there will be higher evaporation rate from the soil leaving the salt behind. So the alkalinity will be increasing leading to poor soil fertility and impacting the crop yield. So all these signify that we have to manage the cropping pattern with respect to both rice and wheat. When rice is overproduced, we have to reduce the overproduction and we have to boost the production of wheat when there is decline in yield. So this is what the article is trying to convey. Now we have a prelims practice question for this particular article. Which of the following states is the largest producer of wheat in India and which is the largest producer of rice? Now here the correct answer is option B, Punjab for wheat and Uttar Pradesh for rice. So that's all regarding this article. So with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel and thank you so much for listening.